All right, so I just got a, off a call with a probate seller, and Ooh. she it's her grandmother's house, and she wants to sell the house immediately. Okay. But she has there's tenants in there that they just get in there, they are high every day, and they're they don't want to get out of the house. And are they she already anything? filed she already filed for eviction. Okay. What state? Uh it's in Baltimore. Okay. I mean they're not that bad. So what's the problem? Yeah. Basically, I'm just figuring out. I, I just started calling. So yeah. I, well, I've been calling all week, but this is the first oh, but, lead up. Bro, had. this is Baltimore, man. This ain't going to be the first crazy tenant situation you're going to deal with. All right. So how would you uh, recommend I proceed from here? So let me ask you this. Have you, um, you have an idea of the, is this local or are you doing it virtual? Local. Okay. Have you drove by the house or you have any idea of the condition of it? Uh, she said that the grandmother did some work on the house before. So it's kind of like she has a two apartment thing going on. Okay. And then uh, she said she drove past and she saw some windows were broken. So they're not taking care of the house at all. Yeah. So, dude, you, you, <laughs> dude, you're going to have people like run you over on this live because this is the greatest problem you oh, can yeah. ever have. So have you discussed an offer with her? Have you gone through any numbers? Uh, she says she doesn't know what the house is worth. So okay. she so, doesn't even know where to start. How old do you think she is? Like just guesstimating. I would say she has a three-year-old, so 30s or okay. 20s. Okay. So you're not dealing with an elderly person. So um, you just got to have, so you're going to have to like build. So how many times have you spoken to her? One. Okay. So you got to keep this up and going. Okay. Yeah, just, that's what I was every time you talk to them. So I tell everyone it's five to six touches on a probate because probates are different. You can't just run them over. Hey, you know, what's the cheapest price you do? So you want to build up that rapport. And like, so here's an example. I go, listen, you mind if I drive by the house and take a look at it? I'll tell you what, what I see. And then after a while, like you are their like informant, they're confident. And then you want her to say like, what, what can we do to get this done? Or like, what would you do in my situation? And then here, Antoine, all you got to do is say, listen, what do you, what do you need to get this done? Like, don't say, what are you asking? What should I offer? Just say, Hey, what do you need for it? To make this real simple because you you buying it with problem tenants is you're solving a huge problem for her. So number one, she's got a probate and I'm sure there's emotions and it's her grandmother's house. It's hard. Okay. And then number two, they have a tenant in there. Let me ask you this. Who put the tenant in there? Did grandma put her in there or did she put him in there? Uh, I actually didn't ask. I would assume it's the grandmother since she was doing work on the house before she passed. Okay. So I assume these tenants aren't paying. I would assume not. No. Okay. So you got one or two ways. You can buy the house uh, and wait till the tenants clear out. Um, when you have squatters, that's how you the preferable method. But wait, was it a was it a thirty day eviction? Uh, I believe she said the eviction date was set for November 9th. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, that's actually not bad, man. I know you, you're 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 in a good position I with mean, it. You just you got to yeah. discuss numbers with it and don't make it awkward. I get it. You don't have the experience for it, but just say just ask her just like this. Build up a little bit more rapport. Don't hit her like right off the bat. And I assume she wants to sell it, right? Yeah. And she's probably saying, well, I can't sell it to you until I get the tenants out of there and I get the probate complete, right? No, she said that her lawyer only told her she needs to get the tenants out first. Okay. So, um, I mean, I'm looking here. Your biggest yeah. obstacle might be like the lawyer, but I'm just, you just got to discuss a number with her. Would, honestly, yeah. Like you say, discuss a number. The tenant should be out on the ninth, right? So honestly, I would try to close on the yeah, 30, try to close November thirtieth. Okay, tenant will be out the ninth. Yeah. Bring a cash buyer in a week of. Give it a couple of weeks for the closing, and boom, close it right. Get a price. Get the sign the contract. Get tenant out of there. Bring cash buyer in. Assign money. That's yeah. how you do it. And just ask her, hey, you know, what do you need? What do you need to get this done? And just shut up. See what she says. And then just understand that's a, wherever she starts out, it's just a starting point. And she'll say, she might go, I, I don't know. Like, what do you think it's worth? I go, it's hard to tell because of like the tenant situation. But, you know, on, on a good day, it might get like this. But you have a tenant. What if I can just buy it as is and we just like 
put this thing to bed and you know we come up with a number that works for both of us. So most people in probate like this, they just want it done. They want finality. They could because to get the tenant out there to do the fix up, get it on the market, put it with a realtor, that's a lot of work. So if she thinks that you can solve it and wrap it up in 30 days, you might be your hero. Here's the catch, okay? And I tell everybody on probate, try to work directly. I assume um, she's the uh, the PR or the executor on the will for the yeah. probate. Okay. So remember, if you enter into an agreement with her, it's perfectly legal and valid. She basically represents the estate. The only time you got a problem is when the lawyer wiggles their way in there. And they're like, oh, we got to get it appraised or we got to have a realtor give us a BPO or we got to put it on the market. You got to wait till this is done and that done. It's all a bunch of BS. Okay. You've got to try to connect with her before they wedge the, um, because then they'll go like this. Well, my lawyer told me, and then I always go like this. I say, hey, Becky, remember you told me if I could buy the house as is with this and get it done in 30 days, that would make you very happy, right? So it's not going to cost you anything to do it. We already have the title work. What's stopping you from doing it? And they go, well, my lawyer wants me to run everything by them. Now, you have to honor the lawyer, but like right now, if the lawyer's not in the way, if you can strike a deal now, then the lawyer cannot bully their way into the transaction. And that's your biggest risk right now. So yeah. you have a wonderful opportunity, like a wonderful opportunity. I mean, just, and then you can, you can assign it. You can do anything you want with that property. Okay, so do you... Do you recommend I just put it on the contract now or wait until the tenants are out? No. Uh, now, put because it down now. When, remember, when the tenants are out, then you're going, it's going to be opened up to the entire market and you're going to have a ton of competition. So I would build rapport. Always have, guys, if you're nervous of ever talking to the seller after the first time, just have an excuse to call them back. Hey, Sue, I forgot to ask you a question yeah. about the house. And then when you have them on the phone, go, you know, I was thinking about it. What, what did you say you need to get this done? And just, the biggest thing you can do is silence. Let them, and sometimes I'm telling you guys, I've gone as long as a minute and asked this question, and they're just thinking about it. And if they want to give you the truth, that's great. If they want to play the games, you might have to play the games. You have a wonderful opportunity, dude, and get it done sooner than later. And here's your incentive. Number one, when the tenant moves out, that property might look worse. You can tell her that. And number two, mortgage values, not mortgage values, Property values are dropping in the United States. They're not going up. So you have two motivating factors plus the probate. Dude, you've hit like the ultimate grand slam in wholesaling. Go get it done. Just be a decent human being and help her out. Most people in probates like this, they just want to help. They just want to, they don't want the drama. If they want the drama, they'll go through all of it. Who wants to deal with that crap? You know? So I think you're in a great position. Just Open up a conversation, and when you call her back, have a reason to call her back. Hey, I, you know, I forgot to ask you this. Yeah, I, I, told her the- I would call her back tomorrow. She's there you go, man. Call. She gave me her work schedule and everything. Dude, give me the lead. I'll call it for you, man. But <laughs> I mean, that's that's like a dream, dude. Like what you got going on. Just just move forward. So do your research. Have you figured out what the value of the house is? Well, I'm looking You're at the prop screen. I'm looking at on the prop screen right now. And, uh, okay. The estimated value is three thirty four thousand. Okay, so I'm not familiar with Baltimore. I can't really help you on this part, but here's a rule of thumb: don't go too deep in the weeds on the comp because you're not yeah. looking to justify it. The most important is what your seller thinks the value in their head is. Yeah, right. and she's already said she's not sure, right? Right. right. So right. you got to kind of help educate her a little bit. She knows she's going to get a substantial discount with tenants like this. And you just need to structure the best offer where it's a win-win for all parties. A win for you, a win for the estate and the seller, and a win for your cash buyers. A lot of you guys are forgetting about it. For Anton to be able to sell this for a decent price, he has to leave some incentive for someone to finish it out. Okay, the days of uh, I buy it for 100, you buy it for 120, and then it's only worth like 121, those days are over. So talk to her one more time, have an excuse to call her back, and just start diving into the numbers. And remember... Don't go too deep on the comps. It's going to be a range. It might be 300 to 320. Stay on the conservative side and just figure out what you think the estimated rehab is. And then just kind of minus off on there and then just give her a carefree um, offer that um, will solve her problem. And I think you'll be able to work with her. But if you wait till the tenant's out, you're going to have a ton of competition. And that's that's why I don't want you to wait too long. Okay. All right, I'll talk to her again tomorrow. 
Okay, let us know the result, man. I'll, I'll be on tomorrow, man. I like that's a good problem. Everybody in the comments, like, man, give me that yeah, lead. I'll deal, deal with it. Like, I, I, I mean, the coolest part is the eviction is already being done. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Usually, I, and by the way, a lot of times they don't even want to deal with the eviction. So then you got to like, so well, it's listen, already happening on the ninth. Correct, so but the more I, I, the yeah. more problems there are, like honestly, it's the bigger opportunity because people don't want to deal with it. So it's a good deal, man. The point is, get a contract, get the tenant out of there, cash buyer. Make some money. Make it easy for the seller, and uh, it'll be a good win-win situation. So just stay on it. Call it back. Have an excuse to call back, and do not wait. Uh, thank you. Good lord. Appreciate it. Have I'm a good call one. That one. That's a good one, man.